What's up, everybody? It's Brian from USA.Patriot.Cards. I just wanted to do a quick intro into this video that uh, I did with my friend Josh at jthorn 75 We had a conversation. We talked about Josh's re-re-entry into the hobby. He uh, dropped out for a couple months back in, I guess, the fall of 2022, right before football season started. And he just jumped back in with the new release of Prism Football. We talk about a lot of stuff, why he left, why he came back, and uh, how to make money in today's market. He's, he's somebody that moves a lot in the raw to grade space, and so he gives a lot of good tips on how to, to make money doing that. We talk about the margins not being there. Um, if you're if you're a retail dealer where you're just selecting you know three or four cards here and four or five cards there and trying to, to put together a showcase and go to a show and, and make money because the margins just aren't there everyone wants to buy uh, at 85 percent or less so if you're buying at 85 percent or less and waiting for that collector to come around and buy at 95 to 100 percent of cops just not happening. So it's a good conversation and it was good to reconnect with Josh and hear some of his thoughts about the current state of the hobby. Hope you enjoy it. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye. So here's here's essentially how we got to to the idea to do this uh, this interview or this show or whatever this 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 conversation. Is that um, how long have you been out? When, when was the last time you were buying this heavy? Um, I, th you know what, brother? I think it was, I think October of last year is when I started moving out of things. Like when the football season was just starting, it might've even been earlier than that. It might've been like August or September around there. That's kind of when I, I saw the, the writing on the wall. So, so when you say you saw the writing on the wall and, and this is going into the football season, what do you mean? Like what, what were you seeing? What? What and what was your thought process? I started seeing a lot of prices come down, and I started noticing that a lot of it wasn't even based off of performance. It's all based on the market, and the market was shifting so hard at the time. Like I noticed it in basketball, that like some players that were going deep in the playoffs, their cards weren't they weren't going nuts like you think they were. It's just I got to get out of these things. I mean, especially going into the season, I mean, I don't think it's very smart to hold any card that's not your PC into the season because, I mean, if if the player doesn't come out, like, red hot, it's going to be, you know, downhill from there, you know? How much money do you think you saved? Let's say you didn't – let's say you were um, looking to sell those cards now. Um, just oh, ball. Sure. how much money you think you say probably like three to five k yeah on yeah. on a market cap of what like how much was your collection worth i think i probably got up to around 12 so you think you roughly saved 30 percent ish yeah you know what it was as i started selling probably like in march but i wasn't really buying back mm -hmm. and and, and that is a hard thing. I think you can attest to this too. It's it's hard to sell something and make the money and get cash in hand and then invest it back in. Like it's it's easier to trade, you know, like a twenty five hundred dollar card for another twenty five hundred dollar card, right? Uh -huh. But to go and spend twenty five hundred dollars cash laid on the table, like that's Gosh. nowhere near as easy. Yeah. No, so, it's it's a real thing. And um that's kind of where I am. So, so you got out it's roughly the beginning of last NFL season, you save 30%. You're looking like the genius. Um, and then uh, banks start to collapse <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, things are just getting wilder by the day. And, um, you know, I get a text from you a couple weeks ago talking about how you, um, you just won some some tickets to the the Taylor Swift like you were in the lottery <laughs> Taylor Swift tickets and you and you bought standing room only seats for fifty bucks and flipped them for like three hundred apiece and then the next thing I know you're like hey dude check this out and check this out and it's been like a steady barrage of um, pickups that you've been making I'd say over the past two weeks uh, talk yeah. to me about like what you decided what what went through your mind um, and um, 
to get back in uh, and what's your approach? So one of the big things that I noticed is that like, <laughs> whenever I needed something for life, I would kind of pull a card out. You know what I mean? Like if I need, if my like kids needed some, this, I would go sell a car, get the money and then I'd go do it. I think I finally got to a good point, like outside of the card world. Like I got a new job. I got other things that started happening that put me in a better, like an even more comfortable position to like buy stuff like cards and not feel like I need to like move them right away. You know, I can kind of like move a little more freely. I had some cash and I wanted to like see if I can make it grow again. And, um, it was kind of like just the markets are different, even in like cards and like I was selling wax. Oh. Wax is pretty much non-existent now. You know, like last year I made a couple kind of just interesting moves, like with buying skill players that kind of blew up in my face. Um, but I just kind of like it's just something I enjoy. And I think you got to get some joy out of like out of what you're doing. I mean, you got to I mean, what's the point of having everything when you can't have a little fun too you know so that's what brought me back i mean i've always I, I still like going to the shows even when i wasn't buying stuff and um i just having a blast but it's it's fun to get back into it and to see kind of where it can go from here and um i mean I, you know like i have a challenge to get up to a field level silver in my homes that's kind of the the goal right now so you know, I was watching the guys, um, this guy, uh, his name's Big Ken. And uh, maybe I'll try to throw his uh, YouTube channel um, under here. But uh, I just came across his channel recently. And uh, he's kind of a funny guy. But he would he, he's talking about like being a dealer. And, you know, he's a little older than me, probably. He's probably in his early 50s, got some kids. and But he goes to all these shows. And he was talking about uh, one of his videos was where have all the collectors gone? And he was saying like, hey, listen, I'm the one that's doing all the work. I'm the one that's buying these cards to put in my case to, to then take to the show. And all I'm getting are these people coming up to me wanting to buy for 75 <laughs> percent, 85 percent. And um, he's like, where where are the guys that come and pay like 90 and 95 percent? Where are those guys? And um, I, that's a great, first of all, it's a great question. Where are those guys? But I, I wrote in a comment to him, you know, I don't think you can be a retail dealer anymore. And that's kind of what I, what I referred to him as because a retail dealer is somebody that goes around and picks up, you know, a couple quarterbacks here that they think are gonna they're gonna prospect, or they go and pick up a couple basketball players here before the playoffs, or whatever. They're picking and choosing these cards, and they're making get you know bets on these players or whatever. But they're they're probably getting in about eighty five percent comps. Um, they're not buying in enough bulk to get a real meaningful margin. When you're yeah. buying an 85, there's no more room. No. You're, you, I mean, that's that was also why I made the decision to go straight into raw to grade because that's the only place where there is margin. Because you're right. It's like, you know, there's people that will spend $1,000 on a card at 85% try and sell it at, like at 90% and make what? <laughs> you know, your profit margin is 100 bucks. Right. You know, like, so that, that definitely was not appealing to me. And I think that the hardest part about being in the prospect mode is that with um, Panini releasing the products after the season, you can't prospect properly because it's like, you can't prospect on a guy like Brock Purdy or Sam Howell or whomever because they've already played their entire rookie season and everybody knows exactly what they're made of. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no ability to, there's no ability yeah, to right. find the next Pat Mahomes. You right. know, right. you can see why guys like Roth cards only goes for like cracked ice and golds and stuff like that. Cause that's just, you know, the easy moving thing. Cause if not, you have the little stuff and it's like, 
you're praying that like a good comp comes out to help you. You know what I mean? I think, yeah, I think the way Raw has to be doing it is that he just, um, he leans on people because he's Roth and, and, you know, maybe squeezes a couple percent, you know, out of, out of a deal where they might sell to me at 80, they might sell to him at 75 because he's doing a video and they're in it and they might be featured. And I mean, Hey, that that's worth five, 10% sometimes, but, um, yeah, he's got such a big, huge platform to resell that he doesn't necessarily have to um, throw it up on eBay and then deal with those fees. When you, when you do get these cards back graded, what's your plan on how are you, how you're going to liquidate back it out? Well, probably the nines will probably go first. Probably just trying to cash out at 80, 85%. Or I will look for somebody online that I could like, trade all of them into like a PSA 10 of somebody that's like liquid. Like I, let's say I have three cards, a Brock Purdy prism silver and a Desmond Ritter prism silver and a Sam Howell prism silver. Well, all PSA nines rather than holding those nines, I'll just take them all and get like a PSA 10. I don't know, like a Trevor Lawrence optic hollow or something like that. Or even if it's not Trevor Lawrence, like, like a Justin Fields, like Justin Fields Optic Hollow PSA 10. So where once you get back into the PSA 10, even if it's not like the the greatest best card in the whole world, like the PSA 10s move a lot easier than a bunch of PSA 9s. You know what I mean? Um, I think football is like the thing to get right now, especially you know Prism. There's so much Prism on on online. This is your best chance to get Prism cards of new players. Like. You don't want to go buy a Prism Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's raw on on eBay. All those, all the good ones are gone. You know they're they're all in slabs, so you're not gonna find a lot of good stuff that's not slabbed up. So, um, I think with a lot of this Prism stuff, although a lot of it will get graded, there's gonna be a lot of people that are um, they're just going to um, sell it. Like, especially guys like Desmond Ritter or Sam Howell, like some of the guys that are a little more fringy kind of players, people are just going to be like, oh, I'm just going to get the cash I can get and just move on, you know? Yeah. I think you timed it right. I mean, prison football came out. I mean, yeah. you know, like that that and and I'd say Optic or I mean, maybe maybe Select, those three are probably the best to, uh, to go raw to grade in. Um, not really something you probably yeah. want to do in Flawless or in T. Um, no, I, I think Prism is good because it has a big audience um, and they're not crazy expensive. You know, like like you could go buy a bunch of, like, say you could buy 10 Sam Howell Prism Silvers, right, raw, then grade them all, and you're going to find people that are going to be interested in specking on him and that's probably one of the most popular spec cards to get of a player. When I got I got a Deshaun Watson blue wave and it was cool, but for a player that I was specking on, I almost wish I would have just got the regular silver because it appeals to a bigger audience. Because you look at like Brock Purdy and then you get into like the red waves, uh all the ice colors, all that stuff. Now you're getting into a different genre of like collector investor than just like the guy that just wants something, you know? Um, real quick, then we'll end on this. Um, what would you advise people out there who are thinking to themselves? Uh, I'd love to go raw to grade, but uh, I can't find any good raw. And every time I buy a raw card on eBay, uh, it comes back and it's all jacked. Uh, and I know it won't 10. So uh, what's the point? The first is look at the pictures. Like you got to look really close. Where are you um, going first? You going to eBay? You going to Instagram? Yeah. You going See, eBay I like the most because you do have the ability to return it. And to me personally, the way I do it is – if something is in the pictures that I just missed, then I won't send it back. If there's scratches and dimples and like a bunch of stuff on it that was not disclosed, I'll send it back. 
Do you think that the seller's responsibility is to say, oh, by the way, there's a dimple in the bottom left corner or just, oh, you can see it. It's right there in the picture. No, I don't think they have to. But, you know, they like most of the time it's like what you see is what you get. Like, you know, so people will post. I think you do have to do your due diligence and really look like I almost bought a, a, a red prism, the retail red Sam Howell. And then I started looking and it had a, like some scratches on it. So I like didn't buy it. And um, the other, the other big thing to watch for, this is huge is watch the angles that people take of photos because yep. if it's off center, they will manipulate the photo to to downplay how off center it is. So it's like, say you have a car that looks like this, right? Like this. Right. Sometimes they'll angle it like this, right? And that usually means top to bottom, it's off center. Right. So they're trying to create an optical illusion to make it look like it's in it's more center than what it is. So that's that's a, that's probably the most common like BS, <laughs> you know, that like, that you can catch. Um, but the biggest, like, with that, it's like whenever it comes in the mail, you gotta inspect it. Like, like if I get it. I'll inspect it that same day and then make the determination to send it back or not. Because, you know, if you could say I got it and then it's refund, you're asking for the refund right away, then there's not really a big discrepancy, you right. know, that goes into it. It's not like you had it for four days and, you know, it's all scratched up and you didn't like look at the card. So, have you uh, run into the situation where they've sent it off to a like, raw card off to authenticate? Oh god, yeah. I have a few things at authenticating, but it's such bull. It's BS. It's such BS. eBay. If you're listening to this, quit with this authentication. Yeah, it's, make it optional. Just make it optional. Make it optional. If it, if it comes back not real, and somebody you know denies that, then it's on them. They have the chance to get get authenticated. If they don't take it, then you know. Let them run the risk, but yeah. If there's one thing I'll say for Beckett, and it's like, you know, listening to the uh, marketplace. Um, at least they do. I mean, yeah, they've made two bad decisions, and they've had to like wind them back. But eBay, your decision to authenticate is just well, your decision to authenticate without an option is just as bad as anything Beckett's done. So yep. listen. And, and maybe provide a little um, customer service and, and give us that option. Uh, what about if you have you had the situation where you've had a raw go and then they uh, they say, hey, that looks good to us. And then they send it to you. And then all of a sudden you see, wait a second, there's a print line or there's a this or that. Will they take it back at that point or, or once it's authenticated? Does that also mean that it's um approved by the like seller's um description and therefore you can't return it do you know no i don't that was something that i've been wondering myself and one other thing is i used to when i would sell let's say like a 500 hundred dollar car or a couple cars i'd be like hey man cool thank you write a little note uh and then stick a couple you know extra cards in there or whatever as a thank you that's that's now gone that doesn't exist anymore i've done that yeah and the uh, people who authenticate just trash them or take them or whatever they do with them. But it doesn't get included in the, the eBay, you know, cardboard thing and it's strapped in the, uh, the card is strapped in. Yeah. It, there's not any bonus. That whole experience, huh? <laughs> those are, those are long gone. Well, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely going to be interesting. And I guess um, maybe we'll do a short little video. Um, as you're prepping, I know you're sending cards off tomorrow. Um, PSA has a new uh, bulk. Was it twenty dollars for the uh, four hundred and under, or is it two fifty and under declared? I think off? it's four ninety nine. Four nine. Okay, it's not bad. So yeah, we'll do that. So. We'll, do, we'll do like you. You know, we'll sh you could show me what you're sending, and then we'll do like a little um, PSA reveal when you get them back. Okay, because I'm actually going to be holding off until I get the rest of the stuff from the authenticators and stuff like that. I think I have like four or five more cards. One big PSA. Yeah. Just one big order just to keep like shipping costs down. And, uh, our buddy Wes has this theory or actually it's not a theory. It worked. It, it's, it's valid 
is uh, you take two different orders, one that is a fast order and one that's a slow order. When you ship them together, it forces PSA to check in both orders, the fast one and the slow one. So it pushes your slow order to the front of the line naturally, and you'll get it back substantially faster than if you were to send in the slow order all by itself. So the rumor that's been going around, um, for those who don't know, is that at Dallas, a lot of people buy to fill for repacks that you see like on eBay and stuff like that. People are buying for a lot of those shows. So um, that's another plus that I took into consideration here is buying, not necessarily buying the highest dollar cards, but buying cards of the right players. Yeah. And then... Hey man, if someone wants to, wants to have you know the the latest rookie class, the top quarterbacks, or you know Trevor Lawrence or whatever, then they can throw it in their repack and you know buy at 85 percent, you know, and they'll make their money. I made my money; all is good, and you know I can uh, start the whole thing over again. Yeah, yeah, because w- when I um sold all my cheap stuff from like 2017, 18 when I was opening packs and then I just had it and I graded it. I sold like a hundred cards for 18 K. The guy paid, the guy paid me 85% on every comp. Um, I couldn't believe it. And I think, yeah, that just kind of goes a little uh, to prove that Dallas is a, it's the Dallas buyers club. Remember that movie? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we should start calling the show, the Dallas Buyers Club. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, awesome. Um, try to get this up quickly and then uh, see where the Mavericks land, and then we'll get we'll get back on, and you can interview me, and I'll uh, talk about how sad I am. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, the, hopefully you got something to be happy about for at least a couple more days. Man, if we could get an 8-1 matchup with Denver, clear sailing all the way back to the finals. I know it. I know uh-huh. it. We just got to get there. I think they're the most vulnerable. Actually, I think all the top teams in the West are pretty vulnerable. Don't get me started, but if if the Mavericks could just figure out a nice defensive rotation, maybe, you know, less Dwight Powell, more less Maxi Kleba. God, Maxi Kleba can't hit the side of a barn right now. Um, but unless you know, it's a game winner. Unless it's a game winner. <laughs> that, that might end up I remember when he hit that, it was like, oh, he just saved our season. Now we're hoping that the Thunder lose at the Jazz and the Jazz literally like have they're tanking. Yeah, they're tanking. So we'll see. But anyway, thanks guys for for checking it out. Thanks for hanging, and we'll see you on the next one. See y'all later. All right, bye. Bye.